There you are, zooming in on me again without me knowing. And I just happened to find out. <laughs> I know you are. Did Brad? Hey, did Brad tell you about um, his offer to me today? Well, it wasn't exactly his offer, but it was, it was the deal that I proposed. I was tweeting about how it was a good day to wash the car, and Brad asked me when I was going to come wash his, and I said, you bring Chick-fil-A, I'll wash the car. And his excuse, though, was that the Chick-fil-A that we go to is closed. I was like, there's plenty of other Chick-fil-A's around here. There's plenty of them. Huh? Good Friday afternoon. Welcome to your 4 to 5. I'm Maddie Gardner here with Lauren Coleman. We have meteorologist Christian Morgan joining us from the Weather Garden this afternoon. I just noticed something. We're all wearing pink Look today. That. That's right, we are. We did <laughs> not mean to do this. Great minds think alike. But I like it. We wear pink on Fridays. Well, we have a lot planned for today, and you know the drill. Make sure you head over to our Facebook page so you can join us on the live stream and chat with us throughout the show. But we want to begin with some developing news out of Washington, D.C., where two police officers were hit when a car rammed into them at a barricade near the U.S. Capitol. One of the officers and the suspect has died. Capitol Police say the suspect hit the officers with his car before exiting the car and lunging towards officers. Officers fired back hitting the suspect. This comes just a few months after the January 6th Capitol attack. All right, back outside talking about triad weather. Now we've got beautiful sunshine and Carolina blue skies, but it is a chilly, chilly April day of weather, and that chill is going to hang on at least through the first part of the weekend. Here's what it looks like on our weather camera network in Greensboro, Winston, High Point, Burlington. And the thing you notice is that these flags are blowing in the breeze over there in downtown Burlington. We've had a pretty stiff wind all day so far. The wind's starting to relax a bit, but it's still chilly all in the upper 40s to near 50 degrees right now. And I think we're going to struggle to make it to that 50 degree mark. We should top out around 48 or 49 degrees. And again, we've had winds gusting in the 30 to 35 mile per hour range so far today, but they are starting to relax a bit. 23 mile per hour gust in Greensboro, 23 mile per hour gust over in Winston Salem as well. And as we head throughout the rest of the evening, the winds will continue to relax gradually. Take a look at this pretty much 
the entire country has nice weather or at least dry weather today and heading into Easter weekend. That looks to continue. Now tonight with the winds relaxing and clear skies, we're going to have an opportunity to really cool off and notice how many places around are in at least some kind of freeze watch or freeze warning tonight for here in the triad. We have a hard freeze warning in effect. That means the temperatures are going to drop down into the mid 20s, a little bit cooler than we were last night, and that of course could kill plants or any kind of vegetation. So again, tonight you're going to want to bring those plants inside just to protect them and you can set them back outside tomorrow morning. Temperatures dropping down into the mid and upper 20s for most of us and maybe even some low 20s as you go back to the west and in our foothill and mountain communities as well. Going into your Saturday, yes, it is a cold start with temperatures below freezing in most locations. It's a little less breezy in the afternoon. We have a lot of sunshine to go around and it will be a little bit warmer. We'll make it into the mid and upper 50s. I don't think we'll cross that 60 degree mark yet, but hang on. I think you're really going to like what's in store for Easter Sunday. We'll take a, take a look at that full forecast coming up. Well, the state just introduced a new level in its coronavirus county alert system. It's green, which means low community spread. And the only county to be green right now is Allegheny right here. Yeah, the state has been using this alert system to determine which counties are doing well and which need to do some work. Over the last few months, this map has gone from the vast majority red to now mostly yellow. Notice not a single county is in the red or critical stage anymore. A state bill that would require school districts to offer in person summer school to struggling online students now heads to Governor Cooper's desk. It would create fully funded weeks of in person learning, six funded weeks, and the program would require districts to identify students who are at risk for academic failure and contact their families. Parents would have the final say on whether their students participate in the program. Other students who may not be considered at risk can enroll if space allows. There is hope nearing that the end of the pandemic and as more and more people get vaccinated every day in the US, of course, we are not done yet, but there's still concern about the spread of COVID-19, especially when it comes to the different variants of the virus like the UK one. Let's connect the dots for you. It is now looking like the UK variant of COVID-19 is the predominant strain in many parts of the US. So what does that mean? Let's connect the dots. The CDC now says that the UK variant accounts for 26% of COVID-19 cases in the US. The variant, which was first discovered in the United Kingdom in September, did not appear in the US until the very end of December. Now it is the predominant strain in at least five regions, with Florida having the most confirmed cases. This new data is not exactly shocking for health officials. The UK variant is believed to be much more contagious than the original virus, with some estimating it is 50 to 90 percent more transmissible. Now research in the British Medical Journal has found the UK variant comes with a greater risk of death, something researchers had suspected but were waiting on the data. Now U.S. health officials are in a race between vaccines and this variant. If we can get herd immunity against coronavirus, it can slow the spread of the U.K. variant, even if it is more contagious and potentially more deadly. Some experts are now predicting that could happen by summertime. Well, let's get to your four to five roundup. Drug maker Johnson & Johnson is set to begin testing the COVID-19 vaccine on younger teens. The company says it will test the vaccine on 16 and 70 year, 17 year olds before expanding to children under the age of 12. White House Chief Medical Advisor Anthony Fauci recently told lawmakers he believes vaccines will be available for children beginning in the fall, but elementary school children may need to wait until next year. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized two changes to Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. It approved new vials from Moderna that can contain up to 15 doses each. This is compared with the original vials designed to hold 10 doses. Regulators also said providers can safely extract up to 11 doses from the original 10 dose vials. The dosing update should help to boost U.S. supplies and speed up vaccinations. America's employers went on a hiring spree in March, adding 961,000 jobs to the economy. This is the best month of job gains since last August. The nation's unemployment rate fell to 6% as more people found work. Vaccines and loosening of COVID-19 restrictions has helped with job creation in leisure and hospitality, education and construction. And the CDC backtracks comments from CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky that suggested people vaccinated against COVID-19 can no longer get or transmit the virus. Her claims raised some eyebrows and brought some criticism from medical experts. 
On Thursday, a spokesperson for the CDC told the New York Times that Walensky was speaking too broadly, stating it is possible for some people who are fully vaccinated to get COVID-19, and right now there's not enough evidence on whether they can transmit the disease to others. It has been 16 days since the Sutton family from Alamance County has been home and said they've been at the hospital with their daughter who is currently fighting cancer, but they aren't letting that ruin their Easter holiday. Instead, they're making it brighter for all families who are fighting the same battle. Chemo at 10 and then they're going to change out her port access. So it's a little a little busy, but it's good. Hey, thank you, Jesus. A good day now is much different for Whitney Sutton than it was just a month ago. She and her husband are staying at UNC Children's Hospital with their five-year-old daughter, Ellie Grace. She's battling B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or ALL. So we're in the first 30 days, which is induction period for treatment, which is a lot of steroids and some chemotherapy. Ellie Grace went to the hospital on March 17th. We had been seeing our pediatrician for swollen lymph nodes. She had really swollen lymph nodes um, and they weren't going away. And it's where she'll be for the next few weeks, even on Easter. On March 26th, Whitney did a live video to update her followers. And they were like, can we send Ellie Easter basket? And I said, well, our church is already doing something for her and family's already doing something for her. So she's pretty much covered on Easter baskets. And another friend was like, well, what about the rest of the kids on the floor? A week later and all 24 kids on the fifth floor of UNC Children's Hospital will get a special Easter basket from Ellie's army. Wow, cold chills. Like it's just, it's so humbling to see it firsthand. People are just rallying around us. The, the community's like got two events going for us when we come home and, and just the Easter baskets. It's something that seems so kind of mundane that we would get a kid an Easter basket, but here in the hospital, it's just such a, it's just such a bright brightness. I mean, those kids are going to be waking up on Saturday or Sunday morning so surprised and knowing that the Alamance County community has rallied around this family. It just warms your heart, especially right now during the Easter holiday. Yeah, most definitely. Great job on that story. It definitely gave me the feels. I mean, something as small as an Easter basket can really go a long way. Um, I know that it's going to make a lot of children happy uh, this weekend. So great job for them stepping up and doing that. Yeah, thank you. it's amazing. And I was talking to Ellie's mom for a while this morning and she was saying that Ellie should be able to leave the hospital on April 16th, which is the day before her sixth birthday, and there are already some community events planned for them when they get home. So I'll be sure to post all that information in case you want to participate or help out in the web story on WFMYNews2.com. Yeah, great way to start the weekend with a story like this. And you know, with all that's going on in the world, coronavirus and even children being sick, uh, again, that Easter basket is really going to touch a lot of people. And that's the thing she was saying um, when the community reached out on this Facebook Live and said, well, can we do Easter baskets for the entire floor. She, of course, checked with the nursing staff and they made sure that everything was COVID safe and age appropriate for all of the kids. So those baskets should be coming soon. Yeah, and also, you know, some families, they might not have that kind of support or have uh, other people in church that can help them. So mm -hmm. it's really nice that they're thinking about the others as well. Absolutely, such strong faith too that family has. All right, the four to five is heading to break, but you can find us on Facebook. We are live there and we're chatting with you in the comments section.
Well, we're one year into the pandemic and there are still plenty of questions we all have about the coronavirus, but one part of our country has had a harder time getting answers, our kids. So this weekend, Dr. Fauci is taking the time to answer kids directly. Take a look. Do I really have to wear two masks? Caleb, you really only need to wear one mask. Infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci is answering questions from some of the country's most inquisitive minds. I didn't get to have a birthday party last year. Will I miss it again this year? Natalie, it depends on when your birthday is. This question and answer series is part of an effort by Viacom CBS's Nickelodeon to help address concerns kids have about the coronavirus pandemic. And now a Nick News break. Questions were submitted by children across the country. Dr. Fauci's answers will be featured this weekend in a series of Nick News Breaks, an ongoing Nickelodeon segment that covers major news topics for young people. A number of kids, including six-year-old Ella, asked about the safety of gathering with friends. When will I be able to have play dates again? You know, Ella, I would hope that by the time we get to the late spring and early summer, you could start having play dates. So hang on a little bit longer. 10-year-old Jade wants to know if it's safe to hug her vaccinated grandmother. Even though you're not vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask when you're with her, and you could go back and get one of her really big hugs. Kids can tune in this weekend to hear Dr. Fauci's responses on Nick, Teen Nick, Nick Tunes, and all of Nickelodeon's social media sites. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Wow, they have some great questions there. Yeah. Isn't it interesting how this generation is going to grow up from such a young age, knowing the words vaccinate, variant, um, I mean, all of these different things, transmission, and mm -hmm. like, it's, it's kind of scary, honestly, like if you think about it, to me anyway, like as a young kid hearing all those words, it's like, what is, like, what is that? Yeah, how do right. you process that? Yeah, kind of scary, but I am glad they're doing an event like this or a program like this because kids have been impacted by this, you know, the most with school, right. yeah. sports being canceled, not being able to see their friends. And we don't always give kids enough credit, but they know what's oh, going yeah. on. They're oh, yeah. watching, they're listening to their parents. So uh, they have questions too. So I'm glad they're being addressed. And they yeah. pick up on the cues and mm -hmm. the stress and everything that's happening. Yeah. And you know, it's like they're hearing so much about it from whether it be their parents and families or, or teachers or whatever it is. And to actually be able to go and ask the nation's top doctor and actually hear the, the words and the right. results and the guidance right from him is really cool and it probably gives them a sense of calm. I wish I could anyway. ask Dr. Fauci some questions. Like they get to interview him. Oh, I want to do that. Yeah. Come on. I'm probably going to tune into that program. I'm watching Nickelodeon this week. Learn something for <laughs> All right, the 4 to 5 is heading to break. Did you know we're live on Facebook? Did, did y'all know that? Yeah, I, I do did. that. Come join us. All right. <laughs> Waiting on y'all to join. I'm, I'm there. <laughs> what is this? I'm just I'm right here. Christian, See, back to the Brad, weather garden. going to call me out again. Back to the Hold weather up. garden. I'm going <laughs> oh, back that's out. Four. Chad brought us salt water taffy. Hey, hey. Salt water taffy? Yeah. Where? There's probably a color of like that in there. What um, color is this? Where raspberry? did you get this? And do you have anything that's going to be my favorite? Um, I so, my I got, so um, for my birthday, a couple of friends in Florida sent me a care package. Happy birthday. And this was in it. It's purple. That's good. Is there a cotton candy flavor? Is, it, are, is your microphone on? My mic is up. Hi. Hi. Chad Everybody doesn't have a microphone on. You can hear Chad through my mic, I think. Water, taffy? Um, I don't have an What IPM, about like, so um, hello, what about like time? a caramel? Yeah, that's what I'm A caramel? A, um, you got to just kind of go for it. Oh, oh you have a cheese cheese. flavor guide. Oh, cheese OK, cheese. so you oh. just have to go for it. Yet I have all the flavors listed out right here. And the back, too. So. <laughs> yeah, gosh. Are you, do you like licorice? Uh, nope. Chocolate, oh, actually, caramel, like mocha, coconut. This is too hard, honestly. This is this is a lot. To Brad is cruising for a bruising right now. Caramel apple. We love caramel apple. Yep. Frosted mm. cupcake. 
So not all the flavors are in here. So your best bet is to find a color that you like, one of these, and then go into here. Thank you, John. <laughs> oh, am I reading something in, in 30 seconds? Yes, ma'am. Wow, I should get out of the salt water. I want this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I, can I put this Bye, in later? Up. Thanks. Thanks, Chad. Bye, nice to see you again. Maddie's on, on, um, on it. As we mark Good Friday today, many people are looking forward to Sunday, Easter. Like last year, many churches are adjusting to celebrate during the pandemic, even with the vaccine doses going up and many cases going down. A lot of services will still be held online. The home Moravian Church in Old Salem plans to hold their sunrise service the same way they did last year via live stream. And Greensboro leaders at Mount Zion Baptist Church will also stick to an online gathering, a switch they've made throughout the pandemic. We're still making sure that we um, hear from God, watch the science, and adhere to every single thing. I believe that on Easter Sunday, Bishop has helped us to really put together something that will add value to the lives of believers. And Easter celebrations are underway for plenty of zoo animals. Take a look at these lions in the Netherlands. They were treated to swan's eggs today. And... Uh, over in the London, monkeys and meerkats also got into Easter celebrations with an Easter egg hunt. Lucky them. That's <laughs> so cute. All right, so what are you doing for Easter? I asked you on my Facebook page today, and here's what some of you had to say. Tamara Fleming says, Easter, we will have Easter lunch at home. She says ham, potato salad, green beans, deviled eggs, and cake. Yes, Scott Lynch says our Holy Week usually begins tonight watching the Passion of the Christ and we will end it on Sunday with church and an Easter egg hunt with our one year old grandson. How fun. Jill Johnson said off from school until April 12th. Yeehaw, going to spend Easter with my family, have some good country food and most of all, great fellowship with fun and laughter. Kelvin Seller says I'll go to church, eat out and watch basketball. I love Easter. It's one of my very favorite holidays, uh, not only for what we are celebrating, but also it's spring. The flowers are in bloom. The sun is shining for the most part. <laughs> colors are bright. The colors are bright and the food is great. Mm -hmm. Definitely the food. I actually am going to touch on this in my two cents later, but I love Easter. Uh, my family always goes all out. We get dressed up in our Easter Sunday's best, our mm -hmm. hats, the shoes, the purses, everything. But, you know, this year we're going to scale back. Uh, we're going to do church virtually and just have an intimate dinner. But I'm glad we're able to meet up this year because last year I couldn't see my family. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, last year was such a such a difficult time. Really, nobody was able to do anything. So this is at least, you know, we're inching towards the right thing this year. You know, my family always always does church together and we usually have a, a big lunch with our extended family that lives down at the coast. And obviously, it's just going to be a little smaller this year. Um, I'll actually play in the in the worship team at our church oh, service on nice. Sunday morning and then we'll have lunch and then I'll be back here Sunday night. <laughs> Keeping us all informed. Right. Um, I'm excited this year. Both of my parents are fully vaccinated. Awesome. I didn't get to see them last Easter, so I'm going to drive to Mount Airy. We're going to do our traditional Easter dinner outside. My mom sent me the um, one of my the menu words are hard sometimes <laughs> the menu yesterday and it looks very good. And again, I asked her what I could bring and she said nothing. All right, nice. Oh, they said don't bring salmon. I was yeah. about to say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not allowed to cook for the family. <laughs> well, speaking of cooking, uh, I saw there's a lot of restaurants that are going to be offering some Easter treats mm -hmm. or you can pick up if you want to. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel like cooking, you can get something to go. Uh, that might be something that we're thinking about since my mom and my sister are going to make the trip to see me this weekend. I think that's perfect. Mm -hmm. We'll give you some good recommendations okay. if you need them. Well, we were talking about list. that before the show started. <laughs> All right, so Christian, the thing is a lot of people are going to want to be outside this weekend. So you have to tell us what the weather is going to be like. Yeah, there's good news on the horizon especially for Easter Sunday. We're still going to hold on to that chill tonight and tomorrow, but it's going to be a little bit warmer and a whole lot more comfortable as we head into your Easter Sunday, but not before a couple more nights below freezing temperatures right now. It's chilly and it's windy. 
40s in April. Yeah, it's pretty cold. 48 right now in Greensboro, 49 over in Winston-Salem, 47 down in Ashboro, and a 48 over in Lexington as well. But you factor in the breeze and it feels like it's in lower 40s or even upper 30s at times. Wind gusts so far today have been generally in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range, a 26 mile per hour gust earlier out at PTI, 26 mile per hour gust over in Winston-Salem as well. And those winds have relaxed gradually as we've gone throughout the afternoon, only gusting around 20 miles per hour right now, and they will continue to relax as we head through the evening. Of course, we do have plenty of sunshine to help keep us a little bit warmer. Beautiful Carolina blue sky, but of course, the breeze is still blowing. You see those flags there on our camera over in Burlington as well. High pressure in control of our weather, but it's still off to our west a little bit, so we're bringing in that strong northerly wind. That's really cold air, but as we go over the course of your Saturday, that high pressure will start to shift to the east and it really becomes centered right over us. So tonight, the winds will relax. We'll have clear skies, and that is a recipe for a really cold night of weather, even colder than we had last night. So we'll start tomorrow morning in the mid and upper 20s. High pressure still in control of our weather, but it does start to shift offshore. We're still in the 50s tomorrow, but heading into Easter Sunday, we start to get in on some more warm air. And this really is kind of the last blast of cold, if you will, that I see for the foreseeable future. We're going to make it into the 70s, even close to 80 by the middle of next week. Tonight, over the next 12 hours, it's a little cool to have dinner outside, but if you have a jacket on, there will be sunshine. Temperatures falling quickly under clear skies into the 30s by the time we go into the dinner time hour, especially after the sunsets. Quick look at your Easter weekend. This is how it looks. Cold tomorrow morning in the mid and upper 50s tomorrow. Cold start still in the 30s on Easter Sunday morning. But by the afternoon, we're creeping close to 70 degrees. So Maddie, I think you'll be fine to have dinner outside with the family. The stretch of dry weather, nice weather, it continues for several days. We're back into the 70s on Monday, mid and upper 70s on Tuesday. Could flirt with the 80 degree mark again heading into Wednesday. Next shot for rain, it's low right now, but doesn't look like it would come until Wednesday or Thursday of next week. So enjoy the nice weather. Have a great week. Your 4 to 5 is coming right back. There you are, <laughs> just seeking me out. He seeks me out today. It's because I asked him to bring me Chick-fil-A. Well, you brought up a subject. He brought it up. Oh. He's the one who brought the Chick-fil-A up. <laughs> it was Brad. So Crazy. I just ate both pieces of taffy oh in gosh, record I time, I think. Well, you're missing out. I think I got a caramel apple, but it almost tastes like an apple pie. It had a dash of cinnamon in there. Ooh. I and got purple. I don't know if it's grape or it if it's purple. something else. I don't know. You can never tell. I'm ready for Easter candy, though. My mom asked me what she should tell the Easter bunny to bring me. I said, Peeps. Ugh. Listen, Ugh. Lauren and I are Team Peep. Oh, y'all can have Peep. them all. Team oh. Peep. Trash. I love them. You I'm can also bring throw some... them in the trash. <laughs> I'm also Team like anything that is sugary. Sugar. <laughs> I'm almost that way. Ugh, I like peeps. salty things too. You know, did you see I Pepsi like came food. out with a? Yeah. Y'all see Pepsi came out with a peeps. Do you flavored. watch the four to five? Because we, we did that story. Them. Okay, I've been off for two days. <laughs> Goodness gracious! I'm just messing with you. Huh? I'm just messing. I with would you. try that drink though. I would too. Ugh. Just to say, I tried it, and I think I would like it. It would just add a little more sugar to it. I saw a um, a broken. national like network morning show tried it, and they were not fans. It was, mm -hmm. there was something weird about it. You couldn't even buy it in the store. No, it was yeah, like you, you had to, to apply get it. and win a contest. Yeah, like, That's the thing where I'm like, well, most of us won't get to try it. I'm not going to buy Peeps anyway, especially if I have to <laughs> apply for them. Come on. Are you telling me if I brought you Peeps, you would not eat a single bite? Mm, probably not, Not honestly. even the pink bunny? I would be grateful for, for the offer, but. You know what we need to get more of?
Well, April marks Distracted Driving Awareness Month. Every day, most of us drive to and from work, to stores, and to friends and family's homes. But driving on the road can be extremely dangerous, especially when you're not paying attention. The independent insurance agents of North Carolina say nine people die in the U.S. every day from distracted driving, and 1,000 people are injured. One of the biggest reasons for distracted driving is our phones. There are a few ways to keep the phone down while driving. If your phone has a drive mode, use it. If your car uses hands-free tech like Bluetooth, use that instead of, you know, messing with your phone and text family and friends before you leave to let them know you're on the way but can't answer your phone because you're driving. Great advice. Very good advice. It's I hope people listen. I, I'll tell you what, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to do. Yeah. It really is. It really is. You have the temptation just to reach over and grab it. And you really, I just, I mean, I have to say out loud, stop. You yeah. don't, don't do it. Right. And I, I know we've done several stories with um, local police departments mm -hmm. that say even if you're on your phone at a red light, you can be considered distracted driving. So don't let the temptation overtake you and get you in trouble. I'm guilty of that. Yeah. One of the things I hate though is when someone's driving in front of me and they're driving so slow, like way below the speed limit. And then when I merge over and pull up, they're buried in their phone. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And you look over. Yeah. For sure. I was or about to ask you if you had road rage, but no. No, don't <laughs> have road rage. I'm just like, okay, of course they yeah. were buried in their phone. Don't get me started on like my driving pet peeves. Oh, we'll, I, be, here all, just, we'll be here all day. It, it's bad. I get so frustrated with people on the road because I don't like to drive. Mm -hmm. So when I have to do it, I just want it to be easy peasy and it's, you know, other people make it a problem. Yeah. It's I not know. my fault ever, you know, <laughs> it's uh, never. I love driving, but I, I Look, I want to get, I want to go, I want to go. I want to get yeah. there and get where I'm going. So Christian speeds is what he's saying. No, I go with the flow of traffic. Can we go on to a different topic? <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I, you said I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, Ricky Bobby. Yes, I mean, think about that movie. <laughs> no, but if I'm in the car, and if, especially if you're going slow, like you said, and I pass you and you're mm -hmm. on the phone, just mm-mm. What yeah, are you going to do? That's a big no-no. I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit and steam about it for the next mile or I'm two. I'm giving you such a hard time. I'm sorry. I know. Are you, I'll started. be easy on you starting now. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be right back after this break, so stick with us. Sorry. Air <laughs> hug. Air <laughs> hug. No. Just air hug. You're not good. There's Brad that. zooming in on me again. Stop doing that. <laughs> Hello, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together like a classic combination. Luke is uh, getting ready, but uh, DLD will do the mic check. Just let me know when you're ready. I, I, I mean, we, we, we can make that work. I don't know if people want to see me, but we, I mean, if we want, we can make it work. <laughs> All right, it's a little windy, so checking the mic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that's a big 10-4 DLD. <laughs> Hello. Christian is not actually mad at me, everyone. He told me during the break. That was all for the show. We're good. Where are my Facebook people at? Gloria, what are you doing? Talk to me. Wanda, hello. Who else is out there? Where is Bobby? Maybe everyone had the day off for Good Friday. 30 seconds out. I, once again, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, Lauren.
Good afternoon and welcome to your 4 to 5. I'm Lauren Coleman here with Maddie Gardner and Christian Morgan. We're all decked out in pink today. <laughs> I think we all had Easter on the brain. Yes. We wanted to have bright <laughs> colors on. Happy Friday. Happy you know Friday. the drill. Make sure you're heading over to the Facebook page. Join our live stream chat with us throughout the show. Lauren, it's been more than a week since you started here. How are you feeling? I think we should check in. I'm feeling great. Bill in the energy, <laughs> Bill in Greensboro. I'm loving it. I'm having a lot of fun. We are so glad you're here. Christian, oh. we, we did what we could with you. We didn't know. We didn't have a choice. I'm uh, surprised y'all haven't given up on me yet. <laughs> Michelle still invite me back. Never that. You do a great job. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to your four to five roundup for today. A uh, mother and her boyfriend are now charged in the death of a baby girl in Greensboro. Police arrested and charged both 22-year-old Denisha Murray and 23-year-old Jalen Maurice Wall with first-degree murder and felony child abuse inflicting serious bodily injury in the death of Murray's six-month-old daughter, Nevaeh Smith. The investigation into the case began in March as police investigated the report of a missing child. Greensboro police say Nevaeh's body has not been found. And around 2,000 Duke Energy customers will experience outages on Saturday. There will be planned outages in the Brown Summit area as crews complete an urgent repair on poles that were recently damaged. In a statement, the utility company apologized for the inconvenience during the holiday weekend, but say the repair is necessary to avoid any future reliability issues. The company says it will do everything possible to get the job done in a timely fashion. Amtrak proposes new and expanded passenger train services in North Carolina and all across the country. If its 2035 vision plan is approved, it would introduce Amtrak rail services across North Carolina from the mountains to the coast. Stops in Asheville and Wilmington would be added to service already, including Charlotte, Greensboro and Raleigh. The proposed plan would also create a new service between Charlotte and Atlanta. And the CDC says people who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 can travel safely in the U.S. without getting tested for the coronavirus or going into quarantine afterwards. This as the agency previously cautioned against unnecessary travel, even for vaccinated people. Now the CDC recommends vaccinated travelers still follow its guidelines. This includes staying six feet from others, washing hands frequently and social distancing. Day five in the Derek Chauvin murder trial. It ended in a short session with two veteran law enforcement officers being called to the witness stand. Yesterday, the prosecution also called on the now retired police sergeant who was on duty the night that George Floyd died. Both officers talked about the use of force by former officer Derek Chauvin and the other arresting officers. Once a person is cuffed, um, the, the threat level goes down all the way, you know, to uh, they're cuffed. How can they really hurt you? Do you have an opinion as to when the restraint of Mr. Floyd should have ended in this encounter? Yes. What is it? When Mr. Floyd was no longer offering up any resistance to the officers, they could have ended their restraint. It is possible that the defense could file for a mistrial because the police sergeant made a comment about use of force despite not being qualified as an expert. If convicted of second degree murder, Chauvin faces up to 40 years in prison. All right, weather wise, you factor in the wind, temperatures in the 40s. That's a cold April day. Of course, we have rebounded quite nicely from where we were this morning. We were in the upper 20s to near 30 degrees. Take a look at some of these low temperatures this morning. 29 in Greensboro, 29 in Winston-Salem as well, and down in Lexington, 30 degrees down in Asheboro. Part of the reason that we stayed a little bit warmer than we originally thought is that we had the winds still pretty steady overnight, and that actually helps prevent us from cooling down quite a bit. Still a breezy and chilly day, upper 40s to near 50 degrees, 48 in Greensboro and Winston, down in Ashboro and over in Lexington as well. We do have lots of sunshine, Carolina blue sky to help warm us up a bit. And this time of the year, the sun is getting a little bit stronger, so it does help us out more than it did back in January and February. Tonight, looking at a cooler night than we had last night by a few degrees. I think most of us will drop down into the mid 20s. And for that reason, we have a hard freeze warning. In effect, really, this is just a notification product from the National Weather Service to let you know that Again, you're going to have to bring in those plants and cover them up tonight with fabric just so they don't die by any frost. We'll be close to a record tonight, too. My forecast is for 26. The record set back in 1992. 
was 25 degrees. So we'll be pretty close on a record there going into your Saturday morning after a cold start with temperatures below freezing. We'll rebound pretty nicely. It's a less breezy afternoon of weather too for your Saturday. Lots of sunshine to go around and temperatures will top out in the mid and upper 50s. High pressure staying in control of our weather. We're keeping the dry weather around for several days and we are headed for a pretty good warm up as we go into the end of the weekend and into next week. I'll have your full seven day forecast coming up. Well, it's Friday, people, and you know what that means. Another edition of Friday Football Fever. Our very own Luke Lydon is live with a look ahead at our game of the week. Hey there, Lauren, and happy Friday. You know, I think we have the best game of the week all season long a little bit later this evening. It's really the battle of the unbeatens between Randleman and Eastern Randolph for our game of the week, week six. And a fun fact for all of you at home, the Tigers enter this matchup, Randleman that is, with 35 straight regular season victories, not to mention a conference championship is on the line a little bit later tonight. Actually, it's 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 really simple. The Pac-7 football championship will be decided tonight. Whoever wins this game between the Tigers and the Wildcats. So naturally, there comes a lot of pressure knowing what comes with tonight's outcome. But for the Tigers, it's still all about sticking to the basics. I mean, all, all week we've had great practices and um, we've had great practices all year. I've, I've really leaned on a, on a good senior group um, that, that really loves coming to work each day. And to them, I, I, they've really bought into, you know, our standard of excellence. You know, uh, we believe in hard work, competition and brotherhood. Everything that we do lines up with those things. And, uh, it, it, it feels like another day at the office for them. I'm excited for this one. I think we all should be excited for this matchup. A conference championship on the line. Kickoff slated for 7 p.m. Remember, both teams are undefeated in conference play. So whoever wins tonight will be the conference champion. So we got a lot to look forward to. Of course, highlights of this matchup or game of the week, plus many more coming your way later tonight. You know the drill on Friday Football Fever around 11 o'clock right here on WFMI News 2. Can't wait. See you then. Yes, it's Two Wants to Know Game Show time. Are you ready, Lauren? Yeah, yeah I'm ready. Bring it to me. All right, we're going <laughs> to solve a puzzle, friends. Here we go. Let's take a look at what the puzzle says. Let's take a look at what the puzzle says. Okay, there we go. All right, so here it is with a few of the letters missing. Can you guess what we're talking about? Uh, this is a tough one. Uh-huh. Is it spring cleaning? It is spring cleaning! She wins! We should have had a, like a drum Didn't. roll and a ching. Okay. All right, so we are talking spring cleaning because it is the season for shopping for cleaning. Consumers are thinking more about spring cleaning and retailers know that. And so to make sure that they're the ones getting people's business, they offer deeper discounts. Well, Consumer Reports found the Shark Rotor Bagless Upright Vacuum for 250 bucks on Amazon. It's not only inside spring cleaning, though. Spring sprucing up is happening as well. April sales include lawn mowers. One deal that stands out for Consumer Reports, the Ego Battery Powered Mower for 500 bucks at Lowe's. Now, when it comes to leaf blowers, the Ego Battery Powered Handheld Leaf Blower is available for 180 bucks. So you can find that at Amazon or at Lowe's. And for curb appeal, a spring trimmer. The Snapper battery powered spring trimmer is $241 at Amazon and Home Depot. April is the first time of the year that you'll start to see sales on grills and a large reason for that is because retailers have this back stock of older models that they need to get rid of to make room for the newer ones so they discount them. All right, so you're looking at older model grills, but who cares? They're on sale. One of Consumer Reports' favorites is the Dino Glow Barrel Style Charcoal Grill. It's 223 bucks. You can find it at Walmart and at Wayfair. In Consumer Reports tests, this grill scores well in cooking evenness, in convenience, and also in cleaning. So just a quick recap of Consumer Reports' best buys in the month of April. These are the things that you will find on sale. Lawn mowers, trimmers, leaf blowers, vacuums, and grills. Happy spring. Do, 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 do. Hello, Brenda, I see you on the live stream, by the way. I'm glad you were with us. What song is that, Maddie? Oh, you know, just a MG original. <laughs> Does it have a name? Um, no, do you want to <laughs> name it? Do you want me to do lead vocals in your band? We'll do auditions. Okay, now I'm seeing people. There's Bobby. Why don't I see, why didn't I see you guys before? <clears throat> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> 
<laughs> Mommy says he's screaming. Um, Easter plans, I'm excited. I love Friday, but like a holiday Friday is just even better. Christian, what do you think? Mm-hmm, always just, it's just exciting, you know? Is your mama making food for y'all? My mama always makes food. <laughs> oh, hello. Here Pay I am. Yours. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Here, the great see, here and powerful. We what, what's happening, Brad? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. A, a slow pan. A and slow pan. Lauren. <laughs> Oh, hey. <laughs> when I walk, I feel like I'm hosting a late night show or a game da, show da, when I walk da, out of here. Da, when I walk da, out da, here. Da, with Christian Morgan. Hey. <laughs> then I'm going to come up here and do my monologue. So, peeps. What's the deal with peeps? All right, I'm done. I don't have any content. <laughs> I'm a terrible comedian. You don't have a stand-up routine no. going? No. Um, oh, I do love a Friday. I wish it was a little bit warmer outside. I was supposed to play golf tomorrow, Christian. Play. Oh, that's right. You've been getting into golf lately. Play in quotations. Um, <laughs> but I got ball. kicked out of the group because. <laughs> I thought you were about to say you got kicked out of, off the golf course. No, I got kicked out of the group. Why? Um, someone's coming into town and taking my place. I know. It's like I You've think that replaced. they just didn't want to tell me. They didn't want to wait on me to find <laughs> all of the balls <laughs> out into the woods. Look, we really are okay. holding these groups up behind us because that Maddie keeps. I think Maddie once the weather gets nice, I'm looking for golf lessons. So if anybody knows some Ooh. good, some good people, let me know. I've never been real golfing. My dad's a golfer, but I've done. The streets of downtown Greensboro full of imagination and creativity. In 2015, the city proclaimed April as I Heart Arts Month. So this month, Arts Greensboro is hosting a public art scavenger hunt to highlight local artists and their artwork. The scavenger hunt will cover 44 different sites around the city. And for safety, participants can share the experience socially distanced with a team or alone. Arts Greensboro's Director of Development, Katina Bergevin, says that the scavenger hunt was a three hour event just two years ago, but this year it will span for the entire month of April. People said, you know, I have driven by that mural or that sculpture every day to and from work, I never really looked at it. I didn't know who the artist was. I never really thought about that piece. And this was really an amazing way for me to appreciate more about the vibrant art scene that we have in this city. Yeah, it's really cool. So the sites include everything from street art to sculptures. People will complete in challenges along the way by answering questions or uploading a selfie or video near different works of art. Once registered, you can donate to the Arts Fund to help support local artists and organizations. You can also win some fun prizes. The arts are really in the DNA at Greens in Greensboro. Um, they have been a source of pride to our city for generations. So yesterday was the first day of the competition and Arts Greensboro says that there's some people who've already completed 20 of the 44 what? sites oh. in one day. So wow. and 44 sites, she says that's just the iceberg of what's here in Greensboro. So sounds like some people are having a lot of fun with this already. I really do love every time I drive around Greensboro, I see a new mural or a new piece of art gone up. So it would be interesting to learn a little bit more about everything that's making our city beautiful. Yeah, and you know, Greensboro does a really good job. Every time I turn around, they're having one of these scavenger hunts and it's always cool. And I drive <laughs> through town and I'm like, where are all these people? I was like, oh yeah, they're doing it on one of those scavenger hunts, which is always cool. They always seem to have some kind of different twist on them. So it's not just the same thing over and over again. It's always, I've never done one, but, but I want to do one soon. Yeah. Here's your chance. Yeah, that's your chance. You can win some fun prizes with this one. Yeah, what are we talking about? What are these prizes? Do we know? So, we so gift cards oh. Um, oh. to local restaurants. Um, uh, I think there was like dinner for two for one place, uh, a hotel stay. They have it on their website, but it's some fun, <laughs> some fun things this like that. But I know prizes. it's some, some This would some be right cards. up your alley to give you Explore, all the gift cards yeah. and all this, to all these different places and you could try them all out. I can part. try them all out. One thing I really like about this competition is like when you go to a mural or a work of art uh, to compete in the competition you might have to write your thoughts about a piece mm. because as she said we drive by these things we don't really think about it you're like oh that's pretty or I know what that is but it gets you to really think about uh, what it represents for this city because you know they say uh, every painting has a story behind it I love that mm -hmm. yeah you get to learn something it's not just hey snap a picture and then move on to the next 
right. thing. Mm -hmm. All I'm cool. saying is, Lauren, if you win the dinner for two, I'm available. Okay. I'm ready any night. I got you. So when I call you, I'm, you can't I'm say there. no. I'll pick you up. We'll go. In a limo? <laughs> I don't know about that. I cannot make that promise. <laughs> Really but in my, car, <laughs> in my car with the giant scrape on the front bumper, <laughs> be whipping it around Greensboro. As long as I don't have to drive, I'm okay with that. You know, we were talking about distracted driving earlier. It was not and the now I have a question. It was, that was not what happened. I hit a stationary object. I okay. told y'all I did not like to drive. Hmm, okay. It was in a parking lot. I just... We started with a really cool public art scavenger hunt, and we ended with Maddie hitting things with her car. So that means it's time and for a break. The best yeah. part that you can't hear at home is that when Maddie said she hit a non-moving object, our producer just went, "Ooh." <laughs> yeah, let's let's wrap it up. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> I feel like I need to explain myself. Um, I did hit something in a parking lot. Um, Not moving. Yeah, and it did scrape the front of my car. Um, but it's to the. It's not bad enough to where I want to pay to get it fixed. Even though Christian says he has noticed it. <laughs> I was going to ask you. I just decided to refrain. I thought it may be a sore subject. I thought that my turn was going to be not as wide. It was a very wide left-hand turn, <laughs> and it just barely scraped. It did not sound like that. I don't but know if that was a... It was, it was, it I don't was think a that was a really barely really scraped. So I, I live in an apartment complex, and it was right, what I hit was right outside <laughs> of um, someone's window, and... My gosh. <laughs> yes, it, just, it, it doesn't it's get better. But when it better. happened, it was loud. <laughs> And their cat jumped up in the window. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. No, it was not anything alive. It, it, don't worry about that. <laughs> it wasn't anything alive. And, and all is well. Um, I don't think my mic's up anymore. I think it, I think we got I don't know, after that story, I probably would have taken the mic down too. <laughs> Get off of this. Everything, everything okay. was good. We're all good. Um, it, the mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just want to make it very clear. It was not alive. It was not breathing. It was nothing that had ever been alive before. It was something that is metal. And no, and the, the cat in the apartment that it was out in front of jumped up in the window seal to see what was going on. Um, crazy so lady yeah, that something. was, it was a cute cat. Looks like my cat's doing. It's a startled cat. It point. was startled. <laughs> Scaredy cat. What are we doing? What are we? Do oh, this is a fun story. Stick around. Really put my, <laughs> really put myself out there today. I still have to eat my taffy. <laughs> hey, Chad. Hey, Chad. 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 What's he doing? Is he snacking? <laughs> Chad always. What's be he doing? <laughs> He's like. Well, we have the perfect story to send you into your Easter weekend. Oh my goodness, babies in the neonatal intensive care unit at Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center dressed up in bunny ears, chick caps, and pastel onesies to celebrate Easter. Yeah, I don't feel like I need to say it, but it's all adorable. Look how sweet this is. The NICU nurses do this every holiday to help families feel a little bit special and to celebrate even in a challenging situation. The twins, oh my goodness. 
I love this. This and you just want to pinch their cheeks. They're so cute. And I do think it is so special. You know, mm -hmm. having a baby is such an exciting and momentous occasion. Um, and then, you know, having to stay in the hospital for a few weeks after can be challenging for families, especially during COVID when not as many people can come in and visit. So I love that the nurses are making this a special time for them. The bunny ears, the cotton tails, come on. Just the fine detail, just so cute. And like you said, it just really lightens the mood, creates a positive atmosphere. Uh, as you said, not as many people can visit now with COVID and the parents, you know, they're going through a stressful time right now. So this really definitely put a smile on my face. So I know it did on theirs as well. I just, we should have just played these pictures for the entire I, hour. I, I would have five. sat back and watched all of them. I so love cute. it. Christian, how are you going to top that? I don't know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nice weather on the way by Sunday, but who doesn't love a cute baby picture? All right, back outside. It's chilly. It's windy still too. We've had some gusts 20 to 25 miles per hour generally across the area today. Still gusting around 20, but gradually as we go throughout the rest of the evening, those winds will start to relax. We do have beautiful sunshine, lots of Carolina blue sky. I don't even think I've seen one cloud in the sky today and you'll love to see that all temperatures though are in the upper 40s to near 50 degrees so it's a chilly april day 49 over in winston-salem 48 in greensboro high point has crossed the 50 degree mark still at 48 down in ashboro and 49 over in lexington as well high pressure in control of our weather but it is still sitting off to our west so we're getting that strong north wind that's bringing in all of that cooler air but as we go into your saturday that high pressure will start to shift offshore and it really becomes kind of centered right over us tonight that will help our winds relax and with clear skies and light winds. We'll have another cold night on the way and probably a few degrees colder than we had last night. Looking at upper 20s tonight, but that high does start to shift offshore, meaning our winds start to change direction as we go into the back half of your weekend. Going into Sunday, temperatures climbing into the upper 60s to even near 70 degrees by Easter Sunday afternoon, and that dry weather will stick around for several days too. Tonight, hard freeze warning in effect. We'll be into the mid 20s. 26 is my forecast. The record for April 3rd is 25, so we'll see what happens there. Still a cold start to your Easter Sunday in the mid 30s, but warming up near 70 as we go into the afternoon. Dry weather hanging around for a long time to come. 70s by Monday and Tuesday, flirting with the 80 degree mark and just a low end shot for some showers heading into Wednesday. And that's your forecast. Your four to five is coming right back. Mic check no. one, two, three, four, five. What's happening? Six, seven. <laughs> Here we go. Three, two. Uh, hey, Callie. Mic check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mic check. Oh. Happy Friday, everybody. Hi there, Hawaii. I'm going to start a new one today. Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New. I cannot throw. I just cannot throw. I am terrible at it. I try to toss things the miles and I hit things in the plexiglass. Splat.
It's time for my two cents. Growing up, Easter weekend was always a big deal in my family. I mean, take a look at this photo. Easter Sunday in Fort Belvoir, Virginia, 1995. My sister and I are decked out in our Easter dresses, Easter hats, and Easter shoes. I remember the Easter Sundays when we would visit my grandfather's church in Rain, South Carolina, where he was head pastor. We had to have our Easter speech memorized and ready. Oh, the memories, waking up early for the sunrise service and then fellowshipping with close friends and family over ham, mac and cheese, dressing and turkey. I can smell it now. It was always a holiday I looked forward to, but like many family oriented holidays, those traditions were put on hold. This time last year, I was working at a local news station in Memphis, Tennessee. My parents were set to fly down to spend Easter weekend with me, but those plans were scrapped due to the coronavirus. I was disappointed, but I knew it was for our safety. As more and more vaccines roll out, I'm feeling better about this weekend. Now, I'm still attending church virtually, but I will be able to gather for an intimate Sunday dinner with my immediate family. This weekend is a reminder that we are getting closer to somewhat of a normal life, but we still can't let our guards down. We must remember to social distance, wash our hands frequently, and wear a mask. That's my two cents. That's your four to five. WFNY News 2 at 5 starts now. We are on top of breaking news out of Washington, D.C. A U.S. Capitol police officer and a suspect are both dead after an attack at the Capitol complex. Officials say it started around 1 p.m. when a driver slammed into two officers at a vehicle checkpoint. The suspect, suspect then allegedly exited the vehicle with a knife in hand and lunged towards police. Capitol Police say the officers then opened fire, killing the suspect. At this time, it does not appear to be an ongoing threat. Uh, obviously, we're in the very early stages of our investigation. Uh, we need to obviously understand the motivation uh, behind this uh, senseless act. Uh, so the Metropolitan Police Department will certainly be doing that. Congressional staffers were put on lockdown as a precaution, but many employees were working remotely because it's Good Friday and of the because of the Easter holiday weekend. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi ordered flags at the Capitol